Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. Come along with me on this trip as we are going out before sunrise in the summer heat to try to catch some catfish. All right guys, hope you can see me okay. It's still well before sunrise. I'm out here dragging some baits. Uh, still pretty warm. Water temperatures are in the upper 80s, 86, 87. 88 degrees uh, this morning. It's dead calm, dead slick. Uh, it is a Sunday, so we'll probably be getting some boat traffic, but the one thing that may keep it off is the uh, thunderstorms that are coming in. It's supposed to be a pretty good line of storms this afternoon, uh, maybe even before lunchtime. So we're gonna cover some water out here, do some dragging. I've got four planer boards running, then two lines straight out the back. And uh, we're gonna see if we can find some fish. It's been, I've had good guide trips for the past four days, but we have had to hunt to find fish. Uh, it's been what has plagued us all summer. You will find some fish, you will catch them, you will go back to that place the next day and they will not be there. So I'm basically fishing a new area just to have nothing to lose. None of these places seem to repeat day to day. Fishers just moving for whatever reason and that makes it tough but that's fishing. It also makes it fun and it makes it challenging. So we're gonna cover water dragon baits and uh, see if we can pin down where some of these fish are. Guys, I think I may have a fish going on planer board. This is, yes sir, hooked up. Oh, uh, this, yep, I think it stayed button. This is on the uh, cut bait side of the boat. Been dragging probably 25 minutes. I need the board to flip. There we go. I'm still pulling. He's probably going to go into the other planer, which will make for a fit of a mess. That's okay. We're happy to get bit. I don't think this is a big, big fish. So we will take this board just off of here and deal with it. Yep, it's coming at the boat now. Coming at the boat, coming at the boat. There he is. There he is. Got my slime cat reel on here. 30 pound Andy line. And I got some ugly stick catfish rods back on the boat. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let's get this fish in here. Nice and steady as she goes. This was on a piece of white perch. On the port side of the boat, I've got white perch, starboard side. That's a decent blue. Starboard side, I've got a uh, chicken. That's a good fish. Is a better fish than I thought. He did not put up a lot of fight this morning. You know, about 13 pounds, surprisingly. Nice fish. Piece of cut perch. Nice fish. Let's get him back alive. All right, guys, there's fish number one in the boat. Nice fish, bigger than I thought. He did not, uh, he did not hit it like a 13 pound fish and he did not fight like a 13 pound fish. But I'll tell you what, glad to have him. Um, I kind of pulled away. I started out in the river channel dragon and I wasn't marking anything in the river channel. Zero, no, there wasn't even any bait over there. So I'm kind of pulled over toward the bank a little bit. I'm gonna make a drag down through here. And a little bit closer, I'm bumping right off the bank here. Probably about 16 feet, it's not super shallow, but I think some of these fish, from what I've seen on some of these sky trips, they seem to pull up kind of shallow in the morning and feed uh, early, early light. And that's probably where they are at night for any of you guys uh, that are bank fishing. Uh, and then they roll back off onto the flat. So it's kind of what we're doing, uh, pulling down through here. Um, chicken on the starboard side cut perch, fresh perch on the uh, port side. Three rods each, two planter boards on each side. 
86.4 degree water temperature. So let's see if we can stick another one. Over here on my cutting board, I've got some very small pieces of perch that I've cut off of there. Those are uh, just little pieces of filet. Now, not only doing that to catch bait to fish with today and later on, but also two things. One, try to get some activity going on with some feeding fish. And the other thing is we noticed the past couple of guide trips, when we found perch, especially when we could get perch to hit these rods and we could catch them, folks on the guide trips love catch them. It's great entertainment in between catching catfish. We caught catfish. So what I'm getting at is I think it does something. You've heard that, ex that same activity sparks activity uh, when it comes to feeding fish. Fish sense other fish are feeding. They either go to investigate or they get fired up and it triggers something instinctual. I'm sure any of you guys that spend any time fishing have noticed that, especially saltwater. So uh, the other thing is it seems like some of these bigger catfish see or seem to be around these schools of perch. And if you can find these perch, uh, if you can get them feeding, there seems to be a correlation between catching the fish and getting bit. So I know not everybody has perch where they're at. Some of you have white bass, which are somewhat similar. Uh, so you may have fish like that. You may even have skipjack. So uh, you don't catch skipjack like we catch perch. But point being, if you got those fish feeding and active, it seems to wake everybody up out there. So it's worth putting the bait in the water. Worst case, you've got some more bait. All right, guys, I got one going on the outside planer board again. Guess what? Perch side. Two nothing on perch. Hit it pretty good. It's a decent fish. Let's see how big it is once I get the planer board flipped. I got the B cap boards on here. These are coming a little further off the bank. I've probably got. I don't know, maybe 80 feet board to board. There we go. Rocking and rolling. Happy to have them. Happy to get bit. Beautiful morning. We're gonna have some boat traffic here later today. I think, maybe not. Maybe these people will stay, run off the lake. Oh, he went real slack. He's coming right at the boat. I hope he stays hooked. Taking a gamble. I seen it on top of the water, too. Yeah. So if he stays hooked. He came. Yeah, there he is. Oh, stay out of that other planer. Stay out of that other planer. He's right in line with that other planer board. Try to keep him below it. Let him go back down. Ooh, there he is, there he is, there he is. I feel the weight now. That's better, better, better. Better, better, better. You see me acting kind of gingerly out here. Hurt my back. There's something to my back. That's a whole nother story. We'll have to do a podcast on that. For now, I'm trying to put this sucker in the boat. Is he netable? Better. I'm netting more fish because it's easier than bending down and get them with the bugger grip. So, if you've had a back injury, put a comment down in the section below, especially a bad one where you can't walk. I want to hear about it. Boom, another tainer. Good fish, good fish. Nice one. We'll take those all day long, guys. All day long. You have to get those in the boat. About, eh, about 12 pounds. Thought he was in the teens. Not quite long enough. Let's get it back alive. There you go. Fish number two in the boat. Uh, another nice one. Double digits. Didn't quite make it into the teens. I thought it might, but uh, not quite long enough. Uh, that one, again, outside planter board uh, on perch. He said we're in about 16 feet of water here. Uh, that was a little further off the uh, bank than the other side. Nothing on chicken yet. Yesterday we had a an amazing ending to our day. The first 
I don't know, three and a half, four hours of our guide trip, we did okay. We caught about six or seven fish, and um, but we hit a dead spot, and there was a dead spot where we didn't catch the fish for probably an hour and a half, two hours. We went riding around and uh, finally found some fish, and uh, the last, I don't know, two hours, we put a pile of fish in the boat and ended with 17 total. Uh, yesterday, a large majority of them came on chicken, like uh, I, I think about 11 or 12 out of 17. So, uh, but I think a lot of that has to do, like I've said in other videos, where you're fishing at and uh, you know, how you're fishing, I think plays a part. So uh, it's a, the chicken is a great bait. It will catch fish. I think there are some places where it's better than others. It's great to have in the arsenal. It's great to have in the spread. Uh, it makes you wonder that how many fish would I've caught had I not been using it, would they have hit you know, was it just the fact that there was bait there that they hit it? Or did they zone in on that for some particular reason? Who knows? But I got them both out today. And uh, so far, it's been perch. Hopefully, we get a few more. See which one they really like the most. All right, guys. I may have a fish on the planter board on the chicken side, inside planter. I think it's a small fish. I'm going to nurse it in. Like he's on there. We'll walleye fish him in. You may be asking yourself, why do I have the ugly sticks back on the boat? We'll talk about that in just a second. Interesting story. Anyway, yeah, I uh, got a back injury. I was saying earlier, and uh, I'd love y'all's feedback if you've had any. It's new to me, new game for me. Channel cat, nice little channel. Like a male channel. Boy, he's emaciated. That gun, that actually, he's either, look at that mouth. It's either a really a beat up channel or a white cat. I'm not gonna count all this race. Maybe you can take a picture and count them. Screenshot it. Y'all count them at home. Tell me if he's a white cat or just a, an emaciated channel cat beat up from spawning. Trying to see if that, trying to see if that planter board snagged. Cause we're coming through a bunch of brush right in here. It's got a fish. Well, feels like a fish. Feels like a fish. Yeah, we're coming through an area that's got a lot of brush in it. And I was like waiting for rods to start hanging up on them, but maybe these old bone town drifting sinkers are doing their job and keeping them from getting hung. People ask about those Bone Town sinkers, and I, listen, I think they work really well in the waters I fish. Uh, but I'll say this, yeah, that's a fish. He's swimming off that way. Different sinkers, I think, work. Different drifting sinkers work differently in different places. I'll say this on the waters I fish. They seem to work pretty good. Pretty dang good. Boom, there goes another board. Unless he's in this, that fish may be in that line. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, so what do you do when you get a fish in another planter board? Best thing to do is give that line some slack, but he's right up to it. He's got the board and everything. This is gonna be a mess. Probably gonna lose this fish, guys, most likely. Let me move something here out of the way, maybe out of the way. Yes, yeah, so I'm dragging the fish sideways and the planter board hooked to another line that may have another fish on it. Or maybe hung, I don't know. We're probably gonna lose this. This is a mess. This is a mess. I 
this fish stays hooked up, it's going to be a miracle. The absolute best I can hope to do is net the planer board and the fish. We're gonna to have to reset all our gear after this because everything's gonna be on top of everything, on top of everything. There we go. Wait till you see what this looks like, guys. Any of y'all that have heard me say planer boards help you keep from getting tangled, don't look at this part of it. Oh, look at that. Now, this is gonna be a cutter. Try to get the boat a little bit straight. Let's get this off first. The old B-cap board stayed on for the entire fight. Let's get this unhooked. Was on a chicken bait, guys. the chicken bait fish oh lordy nice one another one about 10 or 12 pounds another one 10 or 12 pounds ah eh, now nah, it's probably about 10 get him back all right guys there's fish number four in the boat uh that was a mess that took about 20 minutes to clean up i had uh the one line tangled up there with the planer board. Uh, I had another one that was wrapped up in a tree because it was pulling the boat over to one side. I had planer boards off the front, stuff going around the trolling motor. It took a while to un get everything back in order, get retied on some stuff, get reset, get baits on and get back out here drifting. But we're dragging now. So uh, two a piece, two on chicken, two on perch. And we're gonna see what else is by down here. I hadn't caught any perch yet. Uh, hadn't really come across any thick schools of them, but uh, Hopefully we get on some. It seems like the better fishing has been around those. I guess in, you know what, we've been out here two hours. We got four fish. That's about an average catch right here. So keep on dragging, see if we can punch a couple more in the jaw. Uh-oh. I think I got a catfish on my perch rod. I just reeled in a little bitty one. And then this one over with a little more oomph. Go. Yes. Luckily, it wasn't too big. I'll tell you what, if I could just go out and catch a pile of these things on some ultralight tackle like this, it would be fun. Of course, what would happen then is the only thing I'd be catching would be big fish and I'd be breaking them off. But yeah, that's the way it goes. Get this sucker unhooked. That's two in a row, small ones. I actually rolled on this one. I thought he was going to be bigger than he is. A little bite mark, a little channel. Stop. Stop. All right, guys, that's uh, fish number five and six in the boat. Uh, what I said earlier about the uh, ugly stick rods, I put them back on the boat, and here's why. Uh, one, I like them because they're seven feet. Uh, uh, all the other rods, all the other catfish rods are seven foot six. That's great if you're casting but I really don't need that extra length on the boat. Uh, most of what I'm doing on my guide trips and most of the fishing I do is reservoir fishing, lake fishing. So we're not dealing with a lot of current. We're not dealing with chunking a lot of weight. So I don't need the heavier action of those rods that can throw six, eight, 10 ounces of lead. Hey, listen, if you guys are fishing that kind of water, you need that stuff, I understand that. But for what I'm doing, what I'm fishing for, I don't need that. Uh, I like the lighter action on the tip and uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good combo. And uh, quite honestly, uh, they, I think they may be a little bit easier to handle for some of the clients that I have on guide trips too. So uh, it makes medium-sized fish a lot of fun to on these, what you would call lighter action rods. They call them a medium heavy, but I would not really put them in that category. I, they're really a, a, a solid medium action rod in my opinion. So, uh, so hopefully 
we can get somebody out there making a seven foot rod. I know it's not popular because most of the people who are making and distributing these rods have limited production runs, limited distribution, and it's hard to make a seven, a seven foot six, uh, and, and do those varying sizes like somebody like Shakespeare can do just because of volume and, and the scalability that they have to do that. So I understand that. But uh, I tell you what, if somebody came out with a uh, seven footer i think would be a good thing uh even if it saved a few bucks and got the price point down on some of the rods i think it would be good but i think for most people uh a lot of the people who reach out to me that are not you know fishing big mississippi river heavy current they're fishing a farm pond a local lake maybe a little mild flowing river near their house uh, you know a seven foot rod is going to be perfect something medium action uh it's going to be all you need it's going to keep the medium sized fish fun and uh uh, I, I like the a little more flexibility in the tip because I think it's a little more forgiving, especially on guide trips. Uh, I have varying levels of fishermen in, in their skill level. I have kids out here who've never caught a catfish before. I got adults that have never caught a catfish before. So having that flexibility, forgiveness in the tip, it helps. Sometimes people may try to overhorse these fish and put too much pressure on them. And if it's a small, medium-sized fish, not really hooked, good whisker hooked, or just you know soft skin hooked on the side of the mouth. You can jerk a hook so having that uh, forgiveness helps but that's the reason i did it i figured i'd bring y'all up to date on that uh not saying they'll be on here forever i may put some other rods on here at some point but for now i'm giving these a run to, if nothing else to show you guys that you can catch fish on them boom got them going guys i'm not sure i may be doubled up on this side i thought there was a fish on here a second ago i was sitting there talking to the camera and i thought i seen it go yeah feels like there's a fish on it Chicken side, chicken side, chicken side. It's plain chicken. Why am I using plain chicken? Well, we'll get to that in a second. First, I'm gonna get this fish in. Let you all know I've used strawberry chicken a bunch. Changing the game. All right, this is not a big fish. I'm gonna walleye fish it nice and steady. Man, I had a guy here on a guy trip yesterday. Had a couple days where some people were herky-jerky. I think they pulled some hooks. This guy yesterday was smooth. He, he could he could reel in a fish if it was hooked in an outside whisker. But we got him in the basket. The old beater fish basket. Boom, blue. Small blue, good eater size blue. If you want to eat blues, that's the size you want to eat. He gets to go back though on chicken. Now guys, I just got that planer board back in the water that's on the fish i caught but that planer board way 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 out there it's kind of moving and bopping there may be a fish on it i think we may have one taking an uber ride as i call it i don't know i don't know if he's on there if he is he's really small i feel a little resistance he got the planer board back down yeah I think there may be one on there. Sometimes, especially these smaller fish, man, they'll latch into that bait, get hooked up, and it's just like, Captain Dieter's here. He's going to take me for a ride down the lake. Looking for that free on-the-water Uber, Uber ride from Captain Dieter. Come on now. What kind of craziness is this? Yeah, I, feel, I think I feel it on there the planer board off being very lax with my planer board removal folks very lax i got a good technique on guy trips for getting it off i got a, a good place for people to walk to yep he's there and kind of stand and uh we're able to keep the rod bent the whole time tension on the line and if they reel back to the tip of my hand boom it's working Occasionally, if it's a big fish, I'll let it go. But yeah. Another eater. Boom, boom, boom. Chicken. I think that's... I don't count my small ones over there in my perch rod. Because I'm not really fishing those equally. But uh, it's four in a row on chicken. Chicken made a big comeback all of a sudden. Alright guys, I think we got one on the perch planter board inside we went about dude i'm gonna guess 35 40 minutes without a bite 
We kind of came through that little flurry of activity there and uh, kind of died off. Got down to the end of this flat, making a turn with the river channel. You can see I'm fairly close to the bank behind me. River channel makes a turn here and drops down deeper. Let's see if there's any fish in here, otherwise I'll be making a move. Let's see if this one stays buttoned up. Small fish, small fish, small fish. They can't all be big. Oh, he's barely hooked. He barely hooked. Get a flip out, get a flip out. Oh, put him back in the water. Get a flip, got him. Shoo. I guess he's hooked better than I thought. Well, folks, I think that's fish number 11. If I clicked them all off, uh, that would be number 11. Sometimes you get a lot of stuff going on. You'll miss some, but yeah, that, that one's the, that last fish was the first one I've had in probably 35, 40 minutes. There's a pretty good long pull here. We got kind of dead. I kind of got out of the meat of uh, that flat there where all the perch were and I uh, got away from that area and the bite kind of fell off with it. So I'll make a little turn here. I'm torn between going back through that area or moving to an er another area and trying uh, something different just to look at some different water for a while. Uh, it's funny on my guide trips, I'm a lot less patient. Uh, I'll hop around areas. Uh, when it's just me fishing by myself, I, I'm a little more patient sometimes. So, because um, when I'm with people, you know, on a guy trip, I want to catch fish. So, me, I can strike out, but the day ain't been a strikeout. So today's been a great day. It's a lot of fish. It's a lot of fish in a short amount of time. That's only about three hours of fishing. So, that's a, an exceptional catch rate. Right now, we, we would finish above average on what our average days are. So, uh, that's pretty good. The uh, chicken, I think, still is in the lead. Uh, last couple we've had a couple on perch um but it's uh they're they're both working they're both both catching fish so uh not bad for summer boat traffic hasn't gotten bad yet i'm hoping that the threat of these storms midday and in the afternoon is keeping some people off but it's still early they'll show up uh, you know it's 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 just part of summertime fishing for any of you guys that are near any areas that are on crowded lakes crowded waters if you got your deserted river somewhere, you're lucky. Uh, for those of us that fish these lakes and reservoirs near any of these municipalities, they're loaded with boat traffic. And it's just the, uh, it's just what happens. Uh, soon enough, fall will be here, Labor Day will be passed. It'll start getting cooler and this boat traffic will be gone. It'll be nothing but fishermen. But for now, it's us. We'll deal with it. And it ain't hurting a thing today. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no, do do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.